Good evening. Thank you for uh, allowing us to come into your home once again for uh, West Haven Live on Wednesday nights. Uh, this has become the, our new tradition or at least a new way to, to reach out to our church to make sure that we stay connected during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we are so excited about the possibility of this being over in a couple of weeks as I know you are as well. But until we get to that point, we will continue to meet each and every Wednesday at six o'clock. So uh, thanks once again for allowing us to come and, and be a part of, of your midweek. Uh, we do believe that this is uh, one of the best ways to break up kind of the routine that, or the new routine uh, that uh, has been established for us. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we look forward to this. We look forward to Wednesday nights so we can uh, gather to, uh, to catch up with one another, to hear from God's word, to, uh, to pray together and just uh, support one another as believers in Christ. And so uh, we're excited about tonight. And once again, thank you for allowing us to come into your home. Uh, we are going to, uh, to jump right into it tonight with some announcements. Just want to remind you of a couple of things that are happening uh, and just uh, make you aware of some things that maybe you didn't know about that uh, the church is doing on your behalf. Uh, of course, uh, this, uh, this Sunday we will meet uh, at 10 a.m. Facebook Live in this same medium. Uh, we have uh, YouTube that's now available to us. Uh, also, you can see our services there on our website, westhavenbaptistchurch.com. So a couple of extra things uh, that we, uh, we tried out on Easter. They seem to work out very well, and we appreciate uh, your support on Easter as well. That, of course, was the uh, most unique way that I think we've ever uh, celebrated Easter together. And uh, churches all over the world were doing exactly what we were doing, and God bless that. We've already heard some good numbers on those that have responded, and uh, we've seen the number of you all that have joined us, and so uh, we are very thankful for the way that God is using uh, this time that no one saw coming. So just wanted to invite you to come back, be with us on Sunday at, uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, also, uh, uh, you might have seen this uh, online. Some other churches are doing this, some other organizations. We thought we would join in as well. Uh, we would like to have uh, some pictures of, of uh, how you are uh, hunkering down, how you are d making the best of the, the COVID crisis, uh, some things there at your, at your home or maybe out in the yard or, or uh, just something to let us see your face. We haven't seen one another's faces in quite some time. And so what we'd like to do is to collect some photos that uh, Brother Joel will go through and be able to put those in a format that all of us will be able to see. Uh, and so if you've got a, some of those photos of you there at your home, your family, uh, something you'd like to, to send in that other people might see, just uh, send that to, uh, to the, Brother Joel's uh, uh, email address or send it to, uh, to the church here. We would love to include you uh, in that group. Also, as we speak about uh, gathering together in worship, we want to once again thank you for your faithfulness in tithing. Uh, you can uh, send your tithe or offering to 5860 Lebanon Road. That's right here at the church, Lebanon, Tennessee, 37087. Or you can go to our website, westhavenbaptistchurch.com. Click on the, uh, the Give button, the, the Donate button that's right there on our homepage. Uh, or you can use the Text to Tithe feature. Uh, now, all of that's explained in our newsletter. Uh, if you would like to receive our newsletter and you're not, uh, please uh, email our church office. The information is there on our website. Uh, we'd love to put you on our regular newsletter list. Uh, and uh, they'll have our announcements, prayer requests, and some other things that we go over on Wednesdays. Uh, but it would also uh, make you a part or keep you in, connected with uh, the, the West Haven family. So uh, you can get the information about tithing there and how to submit that. And again, we say a very special thank you to everyone who has remained faithful uh, during this time of isolation. A couple of other things I want to remind you uh, to our ladies, uh, the Bible studies that LifeWay is providing. We thank you for our, uh, to our partner LifeWay who's providing these. Uh, there's information on our uh, newsletter there if you can read about that. Also on Saturday, April the 25th, there is a uh, live simulcast that, uh, that some of you ladies uh, have been a part of in the past for this particular uh, uh, Bible study. And uh, they're going to have another one, a new one, uh, April the 25th at 9 a.m. and you can get more information about that on our website or contact Miss Angie and she will take care of that as well. Also, we have our spring t-shirts available, uh, the, the, the Have Faith Not Fear, Fear shirt. Uh, they're $10 a piece. The information is there in your newsletter and uh, they're on the website as well. And also, some of you uh, have already been uh, using this new media format that we've uh, provided for you here at the church. It's Right Now Media. Uh, it is the Christian Netflix. 
and uh, we've made that free of charge to you. The church is taking care of that, but uh, they have lots of uh, videos, Bible studies, different things that you can use for yourself or your family or children uh, during uh, this uh, isolation, but uh, we're going to be able to have that after you know, the COVID has been uh, uh, have we been released from that? But it's a good opportunity to have some time now that you have maybe a little bit of downtime to study, familiarize yourself with that. So, uh, so you can put that to good use during this period, and and then also in the in the days to come. But that's just a, a free resource there that we're providing uh, from our church to you. So, if you have questions about that, of course, give us a call and we'll help you uh, through that. But uh, the information is there again in um, your newsletter. So. Uh, Plenty of other good things going on. Uh, got some, some birthdays. We say happy birthday to Kim Whitener. She's out there today. Adam Sharp on the, uh, the 19th and Miss Bev Cabin uh, on the 21st. So happy birthday to you all. Uh, also on our newsletter each week, we have uh, prayer requests. We have a lot of prayer requests. And so tonight we're not going to read those to you, but those are available to you in the newsletter. Again, if you'd like to receive our newsletter, see our prayer list, our announcements, other things, there's a midweek challenge in there from me. Uh, just give us a, an email, email Alicia at the office or the email that you see there on the website. We'll include your email on our weekly uh, Wednesday newsletter that comes out around uh, 12 o'clock. And so we would love to include you in that. And as we said, uh, or as I said a while ago, we have a lot, have an entire page of prayer requests, updates, some additions and things. And so uh, we'll make those available to you in the newsletter there and, and uh, on our online there. You can download that. Uh, but uh, so many here, I don't want to take the time tonight to, to read those individually. But I do want to do this. I do want to have a time of prayer for these folks and for others in our community. Uh, so at this time, why don't you join me uh, as we go to the Lord? Father, we, uh, we lift our voices to you. We thank you for an opportunity to meet on Wednesday night, for an opportunity to gather. Uh, Lord, we know that uh, our brothers and sisters all over, uh, literally the, the world as we're using this media format, are joining us right now, uh, Lord, in prayer. Uh, Lord, they're lifting their prayers to you. And, and Lord, we know that you, uh, you hear our prayers, you're active working, uh, Lord, uh, on the things that, that, that we have requested, that we see as important, that we are worried about. Um, that we've prayed for. And Lord, we know that because we've seen the results. We've seen you at work. We've received good reports from doctors this week. We've uh, heard about, Lord, and we've seen how you're working and healing people. Uh, Lord, we've seen recoveries and different things as well. We've seen uh, relationships restored and, and, and getting better, Lord. Uh, all these things, Lord, many others that we've prayed about, Lord, we've, we've seen right here in our church you at work. And so we know, Lord, that you're very active. But, Lord, we've also seen you at work in our community uh, as we've prayed for, uh, Lord, our first responders, our health care workers, those folks that, that uh, deliver the groceries, the people who put them on the, the shelves. Uh, Lord, uh, the safety you've given us as we've ventured out to get the essentials. Uh, all the different things, Lord, we've seen you do in our community. Lord, we give you honor and glory because we are blessed. Uh, Lord, we pray for our, our leaders as well. Uh, president, vice president, governors, mayors, officials, everyone, Lord, who's, who's doing the very best job that they know how uh, to get us as, uh, back to work as quickly as possible, back to school, uh, safe as possible, all those different things that, are, that seem to be working against us, Lord. You are allowing uh, we as mere mortals to be able to, to, uh, uh, to navigate ourselves through. And, and so, Lord, we, we thank you for that. Uh, and so, Lord, we, we pray for those, Lord, that are still suffering during this time, Lord. We see those reports on, on television, major cities, Lord, uh, but we also see how uh, the numbers are decreasing. We also see how people are recovering, medicines are being uh, used, discovered, and, and uh, so, Lord, we, we give you glory for that. We know that comes directly from you. And so, Lord, as we, uh, as we come together tonight, we lift all these things to you. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to work. And uh, thank you, Lord, for being an ever-present help in a time of trouble. And Lord, as we, we look at this, this, uh, this crisis lessening, uh, we look at opportunity to go back to church, hopefully really soon, a couple of weeks, go back to a routine uh, where we're out of the, in the community. Uh, Lord, we just pray for safety during that time. We pray, Lord, that that's done in a in a way that's, uh, that, that, that's at, the, at the right pace. Uh, Lord, we pray that it's in a way that um, it, for whatever area that we might find ourselves in, 
it's a way that uh, that uh, that is monitored and and Lord, uh, we thank you for for human ingenuity and abilities to see those things. And so we mention those things because we know you're behind all of them. So Lord, don't let us miss. Don't let don't let us get ahead of you or lag too far behind. But let us move at the pace that you'd have us to move. And so Lord, as we've tried our very best here at this church to do that through this this whole uh, uh, Lord crisis. Uh, we, we thank you for the results that we've seen in the way that we've prayed for folks that are undergoing cancer treatments, those folks that were waiting for diagnosis, those folks are in the healing process. Uh, some of these folks we've been praying for for a while. Uh, some of these folks we've added to our list this week, but uh, Lord, we've all, we, we've received back as we've prayed and we've, we've got more knowledge and we've got more information. And so Lord, we just thank you for that. And so Lord, uh, we'll continue to pray because we know that you will continue to work. So as we lift our voices to you tonight, we pray for each and every individual who's watching this, no matter where they might be, Lord, we're thankful for them. We're thankful, Lord, that they support this ministry, support uh, myself, Brother Joel, our worship team, and uh, Lord, everybody who has something to do, our deacons, our Sunday school teachers, everyone, Lord, who's working so hard to maintain... Uh, Lord, connection with each other. And we give you glory for that as well. So bless us tonight as we get into uh, uh, Bible study time, time to look at our culture, how we need to engage. Things are they're happening and they're changing. We just want to make sure that we approach these things uh, in a good Christian fashion. And so bless us, Lord, as we continue tonight. We thank you for the time that you've given us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want to jump right into our uh, Bible study tonight. And uh, you, you've had no choice, really, in some cases, but to, uh, to watch the news and the broadcasts and different things. And uh, I, I guess one of the best ways to describe where we are right now is, is uh, cabin fever. I mean, the walls at my house seem to be getting you know, closer and closer. So I get home each evening, uh, uh, my children, my wife, everybody's been so good and been so great during this period. But... Uh, we're ready for this to, uh, to, to end and to go back to the way things were before, which I know you are as well. And so be be because of that, everybody's kind to, uh, that, that are in areas that uh, maybe have not been hit as hard or, or for whatever reason we don't know just yet. Uh, folks are going out, venturing out, wanting to get out, wanting to get back to a sense of normal. And so we've noticed over in the, the last couple of days, maybe a week, uh, some of the, uh, the, the governors, officials and things have, are not re quite ready for some of those things to take place. And so uh, uh, in, in their credit or whatever, you know, the, the best, I think, the knowledge that they have, uh, in some cases, they've, they've tightened some of those restrictions. We're going to talk about that here in just a, a few minutes. And that's caused some people to push back. It's caused uh, Christians, especially last Sunday at Easter, to push back heavily as we saw some, um, uh, some governors, some, some local leaders uh, trying to restrict gathering uh, of Christians on, on Easter, even so much as calling the state troopers and local law enforcement and things to, uh, to enforce uh, giving tickets, even arrests, things like that. And so it's caused now this, this civil disobedience by some. We've seen arrest and, and, and some things happen. So what I wanted to talk about tonight, because we've been talking about this all the way through, is uh, several weeks ago when this was announced by, uh, by our governor here in the state of Tennessee, uh, a, uh, a stay-at-home uh, request, uh, churches, uh, organizations shutting down, not, not meeting, not shutting down completely, but not meeting on site. Uh, there was a lot of pushback from folks in our community, and rightfully so. And pushback uh, sometimes is just, just questioning. But we saw rather quickly there that it was the right thing to do, and so we followed that. But now as, um, uh, it seems like it's not spreading, the virus is not spreading as much. People want to get back at it, especially what happened last Sunday. Uh, folks are, are, are not satisfied with the answers that they're getting. So, so I want us to look at tonight, how should we respond as citizens and as Christians? And of course, we've talked about that and doing the right thing. But, but when things continue and it doesn't look like there's an answer there and it doesn't look like there's a reason, how do we you know, respond to that? So let's jump right in. Uh, in the news today, COVID-19 dominates the news coverage. Of course, all you got to do is turn on any channel. You're going to have something uh, to, to do with that. The updates, um, you know, we see the numbers uh, of actual cases declining per day. We see the deaths as far as, you know, the days before declining. And so it, look, it looks like, it appears like in some areas, a lot of areas, things are getting better. So, so people are getting restless. Of course they are. People want to get out. People want to get back to normal. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we 
feel good in some areas and things. Uh, so what are we, we, we trying to do? And as I mentioned, governors in a lot of areas, especially this last weekend, attempting to maintain order. Um, Kentucky, you might have seen in the state of Kentucky, the governors basically shut the state down. If you cross the line, state line there, you have to, uh, you know, going into Kentucky, you have to uh, uh, shelter at home or whatever, self-quarantine for 14 days. Uh, there he also uh, 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 stated that if you attended church Sunday, that they were going to take down the license plate numbers and, and, uh, and then force you into a 14-day you know, quarantine uh, and, and you know, basically treat it like it was a, the law. Uh, California, out, out in California, you, 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 you might have seen some things that, that were happening out there in, in, in certain some of those, those regions, uh, uh, actually shutting churches down, trying to, to, to shut the, the churches down. Uh, North Carolina, uh, th that was a, a big one in the news where uh, the uh, uh, folks were, were protesting the, the, the governor's decisions to, uh, to not open things up, just wanting some answers. So they went to protest. Uh, when they were protesting there, they were told on three separate occasions to disperse. Uh, they were practicing according to, the, you know, the videos and things I saw, the reports I read. They were, uh, you know, six feet apart or whatever, but they continued to protest. Uh, and they wound up arresting some folks, was it a, a lady? And then so when the, uh, the police force, you know, gave a uh, response to that, they basically said that, uh, uh, that, that protesting was not an essential service. It uh, wasn't essential at the time. And, and that really has rattled some folks. And of course, Mississippi has been a lot of things that are were happening down there. And uh, you, can, you can look up each of these. These are just some of the major news stories or states in the, in the major news stories that were happening. So a lot of the overreactions by the, the leadership are causing people to, to speak out. Uh, anytime that somebody feels that there's injustice, Christian or not, injustice or whatever, uh, they're going to be pretty outspoken about that. And that's what a lot of these things have happened in these states. So governments are responding to those speaking out in all kinds of different ways, uh, asking us to be patient, asking us to give, us a, give them a little bit more time, uh, providing different uh, uh, relief packages and things like that, trying to, but, but others are actually turning to uh, physical you know, law, issuing tickets, um, or making arrests, uh, making th threats, trying to keep people at bay. So all of this is causing lots of confusion. Uh, it's causing tempers to flare. It's causing emotions to grow. So w what do we do? As we've evaluated as Christians or tried to evaluate our response, you know, w what do we do now that the government in some of these places seem to uh, not be giving us the answers or keeping us as, as we, we think? So uh, when is civil disobedience okay? Civil disobedience comes in all kinds of different forms. You've got the, uh, the, the anarchy, the anarchist person, you know, they're the ones that, you know, we've seen know all about these. They, they say that they can choose or they believe they can choose to disobey government whenever he or she likes and whenever they feel that it's personally justified in doing so. So uh, that's one form, and we're totally as Christians against that, totally against anarchy. Uh, and then there's the folks that over history, the extreme patriot, they says, say basically this, uh, a person should always obey the country, whatever, no matter what, government, um, extreme patriots. Uh, I'm, I'm a patriot. I, I love the United States, but there's an extreme to there's a militant form of this. And we saw this in, in or this was one of the things that, that, that Nazi Germany, when they uh, began to put some of the Nazis on trial, for all of the atrocities that committed against the, uh, the Jewish folks and war crimes and things. And basically their defense was, well, we were just doing what we were told to do. Uh, well, we saw in, in history there that that wasn't acceptable, it's never acceptable. So uh, that's another form of civil disobedience and we don't really agree with that one either. There's, a, there's also though what's called biblical submission. With a Christian, it's you know, act in a civil disobedient way to government, it, it, it's always against evil. It's always against what, what God has called good and God has told us to do. And when a government tells us to do the opposite of that, uh, then that's when Christians might enter into civil disobedience. And I'm just defining things. I'm not saying this is a time for that. I'm just trying to give us a platform to work off of. Disobedience of civil authority is justified when that authority requires us, requires us, commands us, passes a law or whatever, us to disobey God, requires us to disobey God. So, the, so when a 
a, a earthly government tells us that this is the law, this is the command, and it directly goes against the law of God, that's when Christians, according to the Bible, have authority to act. And I'm going to show you what the Scripture says uh, uh, about that. Now, this is a passage of Scripture that we've gone to, we continue to go to, uh, but it, it, Romans 13, it, it, it describes what I think a lot of folks have been thinking about how we should respond. So let me just re remind you what Paul says there. Let every person be subject to govern authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted, come back to the authorities, by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. That's God's judgment in whatever way. For rules are not a terror to good conduct. Now pay attention to this because I have a point here. But it's to bad conduct. Would, would, you, would you have no fear for the one who is in authority? Well, no, if you're doing what's right. Then do what is good. And you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, the avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. You know it's the right thing to do because we're being told that. For because of this, you also pay taxes. Just an example. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, re uh, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is is oh so we've probably you've probably read this we've read this talked about this time you know what should we do obey the government and all of that that so so but this is not what I'm talking about tonight because let me show you something to consider about this this passage this, this Romans passage addresses the issue of a rebellious citizen not a rebellious government in other words so when the government is doing what it's supposed to be doing and you know passing laws that are for the good of everyone. All It might not be in God's name or a Christian, but it's God has appointed those rules. So when a government's doing what the government's supposed to be doing, then, then we, should be, we should obey. We should be about following that and being good citizens. And that's why Paul gives us those examples there. So this passage in Romans then is, is really for a citizen who is contemplating or thinking about or is in the process of being rebellious toward the government for no good reason, because the government's doing what they should be doing. So, this passage declares that a good Christian is a good citizen. You keep the law of the land, you don't run red lights, you don't evade income tax, you maintain the speed limit, you do all those things that, that's for the common good. So, if you're good, government's good. Government's good, you're good. But when the government steps out of that, when it doesn't follow that, that's what we're talking about tonight. So, so when should I respond? There are lots of biblical verses that have to do with civil disobedience. You can go to 1 Peter 2, you can go to Titus 3, Daniel 3. Um, also, it goes over in, in, in 6, talking about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, of course, in the first part there. Exodus, Hebrews, uh, Romans, all of those have examples of what would, would be considered where, where one uh, disobeys or goes against the government. So it's not uncommon. In fact, it's very common in Scripture. Recognize that, that there's no passage, though, that gives the biblical position on civil disobedience. And in other words, there's no passage, Old or New Testament, that says, when the government does this, then you have the right to do boom, and spells it out specifically. There's, there's simply just not a passage that we could point to and say, I have the right to, you know, rebel, or it's just not, it's not there. So, we must use wisdom in deciding how to proceed in any and every situation whether that's dealing with something in the family, the church, the, you know, especially in the government. Right now, in this moment, as people are in civil unrest because they're, they're not, they don't trust the government so much, they're ready to get back, they don't believe all this being said or whatever, maybe some things are happening and saying it's overreach. So what do we do? We've got to use wisdom. We, we've got to wait, not, not use our emotion, but use our wisdom per, to proceed. Think about this. Paul never considered civil disobedience as an op option, even as he lives under the wicked rule of Nero. In, in all of Paul's writings, in, in majority of it, he's living under this, the evil rule of, of Nero. And you can read history and you know about Nero and all of that, but never does Paul say, overthrow the government. Never does he say that you don't have to, because you're now a Christian, you don't have to follow uh, the law. In fact, 
There's a, uh, there's, there's a, a whole book. It's actually just one simple letter, one chapter about it, it, at the end of the, the New Testament. You can go back and read this. It's, it's, it's all about how a, a, a slave, a servant escapes, becomes a Christian and wants to come back to his master, to his household. And Paul basically is asking that, uh, that he be forgiven. Well, you're going, wait a minute, that's going against the, the law. That would, that would be, in, but that's there in the scripture. And so we've got to think about these things and not use our emotion. The fact that Jesus never used civil disobedience. This is one of the reasons why many stopped following after him. You remember in, in a couple of times in the Gospels, Jesus says, no, I'm not about that. I'm about this. And, and people's like, wait a minute. That's not what we, we thought you were going to overthrow the, the Romans. And Jesus was like, no, no, no. My, my kingdom's in a different place. And people lost interest and they stopped following. So there's folks out there. My point is that fo there's folks out there that, that want to overthrow, that want a physical reaction. But in Scripture, the majority of the time, we're told not a physical reaction, but a, a reaction of, of, uh, of support, but um, proceeding in wisdom. But when it, it's contrary to what God has told us to do, uh, we see the reaction from these examples that they go against government and always on the side of God. So civil disobedience takes different forms. American Revolution, great example, applies to all of us that are Americans that are watching this tonight. But that's an extreme form. I mean, you, the whole Declaration of Independence there, you read that. The Articles, Constitution, all of those, those different things, the amendments that were written, extreme form. And that's only in a last case uh, example. But you can do things like protesting, speaking out in public, all those as Americans. We're very unique in the opportunities in this country that we have. So it's very difficult to say, you know, all Christians at this time all over the world should behave in this way because in many places, most places around the world, the government doesn't allow for free speech. But while we here in this country have the constitutional right to do that, we should enter into protesting and speaking out in public, writing letters of disagreements. So when believers feel that they should disobey the government, they must be certain that it's not because the government has denied them their rights but because the government, it, has denied them God's rights. So when we come to the point of civil disobedience as Christians in this country, we have to check ourselves before we respond and ask this question, is it because they're not letting me do what I want to do, or they're making me do something that's against what God wants me to do? There's a big difference between those two things. And I really don't think that we're at that point just yet in this COVID crisis. Submission and other uh, uh, submission and, and, and obedience. Here's the difference between the two. You can obey without submitting, and you can submit without obeying. So how is that? Listen, submission is about placing yourself under someone's authority and oversight. It's not merely about your action, but about your relationship to them. So submission says you're in charge, and I'm not. I will honor and respect your judgment. Right now, that's what we've encouraged Christians to do is honor and respect the judgment of our leaders. They are privy to information that many of us do not have. They have researchers. They have different examples. They have things that we don't know about. So right now, we need to make sure that, that we are honoring and respecting their judgment. But when it, when it comes a time when they're, they step over that line and they're actually telling us, commanding us, writing laws that keep us from doing the things that God has told us to do, that's where the difference lies. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here and how this works out, the submission and obedience. Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego, we all know that story, uh, especially Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They honored the king and his representatives, but they didn't always obey. You think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were subject to, to their, their, the leaders that were there, but they asked permission. I don't want to eat this fine food. Um, and, and they tested them out after a few days, and they were in much better shape than any other people. But then when it came time to bow down to the idol, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we will not bow down. Our God will rescue us. And even if he doesn't, we still won't bow down. And you know how that story ends. Daniel, in the same book there, Daniel, there was a mandate or an order, a law that said that you couldn't pray to any other God except for the king. Well, Daniel went up to his room like he always had done in the past and prayed to God. Well, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den for that. God protected him through that. 
And so because of that, the, the king had a change of heart and understanding, and you know how that story ended up. So here's that, that just those four Hebrews gives us an example of what we're talking about, that they were carted off, put under another country's rule. They were subject and respectful to that until it came to the point where they were told or commanded to do something that was contrary to what God told them to do. But even in their disobedience, they were submissive. They acknowledged and yielded to the king's authority to punish them and to put them to death if he saw fit to do so. And they tried in, in all four of those cases, and God prevailed, and we know their stories. So when is more action needed? So when does that come? So whenever the civil government forbids the practice of things that God has commanded us to do or tells us to do things that he has commanded us not to do, then we are on solid ground in disobeying the government and rebelling, rebelling against it. If you flip over in your Bible to Acts chapter 4, 5, and 6, you'll see the story of Peter and John and when they were, were preaching in, in the streets that, that Christ had arisen and that people needed to repent. They were preaching against the, what was known there at that time as the synagogue or the Jewish leaders, the religion at that time. Uh, the word came. They were brought before the Sanhedrin and they told the whole story of Jesus, proved that they were good Jews and knew their Jewish history, pointed to Jesus being the Messiah pointed to his resurrection, gave some examples of that. Sanhedrin didn't like it, of course, because Peter was the one saying, you were the one that killed the Christ, you were the one that hung him on the cross, and you need to repent, you need to say that you're sorry, and you need to, uh, to accept him and his, penalty, uh, his payment for the penalty of your sins and become a Christian, basically. Well, they didn't like that, so they beat him up, put them in jail for a while, said, don't preach that anymore, and sent them out to the streets. Well, the very next day after they're released, they go out and start preaching Christ again. And so word got back to the religious leaders. They hauled them back in. And they said, you know, hey guys, we told you not to do this. And Peter says this. He says in, in, in Acts 5 verse 29, we must obey God rather than human beings. Yeah, you told us. Yeah, we heard you. You didn't stutter. You made sense. We understand where you're coming from. We told you we were going to continue telling people about Jesus because we were commanded to do that by our Lord, and we will continue no matter what that, that you do to us. We have to do that. That's a time of civil disobedience, and that's a time that we see the persecution of the church beginning and continuing. So what do we do now? What do we do in our time? We have it so good in the United States. So most of the things that I've been talking about tonight will not apply present day to most any other country in our world. In, in fact, we've talked before about how in, in China, the churches have tried to use these formats that we're using tonight and have been, uh, you know, the Internet and the, the Chinese government has shut them down. They don't want word to, to get out. Uh, but more close to home, if you go back and look at that California story, uh, you've got a, a, a mayors and areas there that are saying that, that, that churches, choirs can't gather and record their music and sing songs because the, the, uh, the, 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 the COVID could spray as they're speaking or whatever, even if there's only you know, less than 10 in the group. Um, in California, they said that you can't use any type of harmonica or wood instrument to where you're, you're, you're blowing into the instrument. Um, and it's just, it's ridiculous to the level of the line that they've crossed. So even in our country, some of these things are being said, but we're nowhere near countries like China and communist countries like uh, North Korea that are, are penalty of death by even trying to get the word out. So Recognize this, we are very, very, very blessed. So we have laws that allow us to pursue justice when we believe that our leaders, leaders are in error. So if we take the California example, there are limits to how much an individual can take before he or she acts, and so you have to take legal action. What we're seeing there is that now uh, federal lawsuits are being brought or federal, by federal or through federal courts because it would be the highest to go out for the states. Uh, in, in trying to get these rights back that, that they've not uh, rightfully or correctly legally taken away. Before we act, make sure that the actions are not harming someone uh, unintentionally. We've got to be very careful when we talk about regaining our, our rights when, when churches or Christians are being singled out. That's the thing that I tried to impress upon our folks here is that when all this started, it wasn't just churches that they were asking, the government was asking not to meet. It was all organizations, all groups, all gatherings. 
But we've seen over the last couple of weeks now uh, uh, stores where large gatherings are, you know, people are able to come in unrestricted. Uh, we've seen uh, essential services labeled uh, uh, liquor stores and places like that labeled as an essential service, which is, you know, fine, whatever. However, churches are then told at the same time that they can't meet, they can't have a drive up service on Easter. Uh, they can't have, uh, you know, uh, uh, cars pass by and, and pastors hand out the Lord's Supper, the communion elements. Uh, some of these states are doing that. that. That's when we, what are we doing? So, yeah, gathering together in a tight organization or whatever where a virus is being spread, that, 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 would, that would be harmful to our neighbor. We shouldn't do that. But when we find ways to continue to meet or get the word out, and then the government continues to try to suppress, and it looks like it's Christians, that's when we have to act. We have to ask, are we harming someone unintentionally? And so that's one of the things that, that we've, we've tried to do through this whole process, is ask the question, is it, will our actions harm someone else? And so that's why we've taken the steps that we've taken here. Uh, when it was necessary for folks to come up. We've had hand sanitizer. We've, we've, we've cleaned multiple, multiple times throughout the, the process, making every, because we consider ourselves an essential service. And the government, thankfully, uh, Governor, Governor Lee has, has acknowledged that. And we're very grateful for our governor and his leadership. Um, but we followed all of those. But if there ever came a time to where those uh, abilities were restricted, or if it goes on a prolonged time, well, then that's when we have to begin to talk and pray and seek the discernment of the Lord to make those decisions. So I hope that just real quickly as we've gone through this tonight, I've shown you some biblical examples, shown you some historical examples as well, and I've shown you how quickly emotions can take charge. And when we allow emotions to lead and, and not wisdom from the Spirit, we can wind up causing more harm than we intended. The government can do that as well, and that's why we've got to keep them in check. But we have laws in place to make sure we follow. And after those things are exhausted, after we've gone through those steps, that's when the next step. But let's pray that, that it doesn't even get close to that. Let's pray for these areas that are struggling right now uh, in our country, these areas that are having leadership crisis in our country as well, and pray for, for the, the, the Lord to step in and intervene. So, uh, so some of these things that we've seen in the last couple of days on television, uh, we don't see any more of that. And we get back to, to being the great country that we are and the great country that the world looks at us to be. More than that, the, the great Christians that we are and the great witness that we are to this world. We've got an opportunity, folks, and the Lord's blessing us through it. Let's don't miss that. Let's don't squander that. Let's don't, get, let's don't let it get past us without taking advantage of it as well. And you being here tonight and being a part of this study shows that you want to be a part of that. So let's pray for each other. Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to gather together, to study your word just quickly, to, to look at some things that are going on in our community, to remind ourselves of the freedoms that we have here and, and Lord, how quickly some of those freedoms can be taken away if we, we don't, don't act. And so, Lord, uh, but uh, the emotions are high now. Uh, Lord, uh, tempers are flaring. People are feeling uh, claustrophobic in their homes. And it, it's been a big change. And, Lord, we've still got some days ahead of us. We understand that. But as we slowly work our way out of it, Lord, let us not work too quickly till we, we cause some unintentional harm. Uh, let us, Lord, not have the government overreact either uh, to restrict, Lord, uh, freedoms that our Constitution says that we have uh, by you, by rights that are given by God. And so, Lord, uh, help us to, to weigh those things correctly, good discernment. Uh, help us, Lord, to lean on one another for, for leadership and discernment as well. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through your word. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through examples as well in history. And thank you, Lord, for good leaders who, who follow, Lord, your direction. And so we pray for them, Lord, at this time with grateful hearts. We pray, Lord, for those who, uh, who Lord, who don't know you, who don't call upon you. Who, Lord, for those who, through their words or even their actions, deny you. We do pray for them right now. We pray for their salvation. We pray, Lord, that, that you will, through this, this crisis, that... Uh, through whatever means that you see fit, that you will, you will soften their hearts. You, you will, Lord, show them their need for you, and, Lord, they will respond accordingly. 
And Lord, that they will, uh, Lord, for whatever reasons that they might have, that they will not overstep the leadership, Lord, as we've seen the scripture tonight, that you've given them. So Lord, we pray for their people that they lead as well. We pray, Lord, for patience uh, to, within them, Lord. We pray for, uh, for relief to come to them soon. But Lord, more than all of this, we, we, we pray that your will be done. And that's what we seek after. And so, Lord, during the time of, uh, from this point forward to whenever we get back into a routine or what, what the new normal will be, uh, we pray for patience. But we pray that we don't sit on our hands either when it's time to act. Let us educate ourselves. Let us become more aware of the ways that you want us to work so that we don't miss this opportunity that you've put before us. And Lord, in the end, no matter what, we give you glory for all things because we know that you are still on the throne. Thank you for watching after us. Thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us again on this Wednesday night. We pray that you have a good rest of the week. Pray also that you'll be back with us uh, this Sunday at 10 a.m. Facebook Live, YouTube, or on our website, westhavenbaptistchurch.com. Until then, have a great week. God bless you.